So that's number two. Number three is probably going to be coming this week. This is the big one on January 6th. This is special counsel Jack Smith's been investigating everybody. This is taking place out of the D.C. circuit, and he has breached Trump's attorney-client privilege with his lawyers. So lawyers are testifying in this case. He's breached executive privilege. These D.C. judges have, have allowed all this to happen. Breached executive privilege. So Mike Pence testified. Rudy Giuliani testified. Trump's lawyer, Evan Corcoran, all testified. And Trump got the target letter. So we know he's, you know, they're presenting all of this stuff to a grand jury. And I, I'm guessing it's going to drop any minute now. And that's going to be the most serious of all of these. And I'm actually concerned about that. And we can get into that, you know, if you want. But there's there's a lot going on on that case. And we don't know what those charges are going to be, but they might be, you know, they might try to hit him with an insurrection charge or even a seditious conspiracy charge, which is the same charge that the Proud Boys got. And it's the same charge mm -hmm. that the Oath Keepers got. And the, the leader of the Oath Keepers, Stuart Rhodes, got convicted of seditious conspiracy. And by the way, they all pointed their fingers at Trump. Okay, all the defendants pointed their fingers towards Trump and mm -hmm. said that, you know, he told him to go do this stuff. He's going to prison for 18 years. And the, and the government is upset about that. They are appealing that 18 year sentence. They want more for Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the Oath Keepers, who wasn't even there on January 6. So my point is, if they hit Trump with that same charge, I mean, if, if those guys are going away for two decades for seditious conspiracy, they think Trump was the most seditious conspirator. He led the whole thing. So how if and also these guys were in custody there, there this entire time this entire time pending their trial ever since January 6. So if they are too dangerous to let out of custody and to release, why is Trump not also too dangerous to be let out of custody? I think a judge might find the same. Well, Stuart Rhodes is too dangerous. Why isn't Donald Trump too dangerous? Or why Stuart Rhodes gets 18 years. Why shouldn't Donald Trump get 25? And this is all taking place out of DC. And so it's going to be a very... Uh, very, very precarious position. I'm not sure what it's going to look like when the indictment comes. It would be insane if they held him in custody, but we have insane judges in DC. So I don't know. And that's going to be any minute now. I mean, that's, I thought it was going to drop on Friday, but it might drop uh, early this week. And then Jesus. Wow. It's a lot. I know so, it's a lot. It, no, no, it, it definitely is. And so you said you're concerned about the last case. Do you think that they could actually get a conviction or at least stop him from being able to travel around, do campaign events, all that kind of stuff. I'm most concerned about the January 6th case. I think that yeah. that is a very unfavorable jurisdiction for him to be in the mm -hmm. D.C. Circuit Court. We've covered a lot of other trials in the D.C. Circuit, mostly the January 6th cases. And the judges there have just a raw antipathy towards January 6th and towards mm -hmm. Trump in general. So yeah. when, when a judge... When somebody's charged with a crime, they go through an arraignment and the judge sets release conditions. And it's, it's a very critical part of this whole thing. We've seen Trump go through it twice. We saw him go, go and get arraigned in Florida, released. Same thing in New York with no conditions. So he's got, you know, he's got no pretrial services. He doesn't have to wear an ankle monitor. He doesn't have to be on home detention. He's not giving up his passport or anything like that. Whereas a DC judge, might might do something like that. I don't know because they have kept, you know, well over a hundred a hundred J sixers, many of whom were nonviolent. Okay, Enrique Tario was not even there. Stuart Rhodes was not even there. They were just planners, and they held him in custody because they were too dangerous. And like I know it sounds crazy to think that a DC judge would keep Trump in custody. I know, but. If we rewind the clock a year ago, it also sounded crazy that they were going to be indicting him and raiding his his home in Mar-a-Lago, you know. So yes. they're at a stage now where I think it's kind of break glass in case of emergency. They don't have a lot of other options. They've got, you know, this demented president who can't even remember where he is most of the time. They've got this corrupt son and this family cover up that's been exploiting mm -hmm. you know, America for so long. Yes. What are they going to do other than prosecute yes. him? And they're on it.